So this is the first thing you see when you walk in. That is a B-25 Mitchell bomber, two-engine bomber. You see uh, a, a troop, a uh, troop transport, invasion stripes. And the big plane behind it with the A on the tail is Fifi, one of the only B-29s flying. There are only two. And she's maintained in Wichita, Kansas. Harrison Ford, I believe, is one of the people that contributed money to her restoration. Uh, at the old Boeing plant there in Wichita. And she's quite something to see. So here's a musical interview, an interlude, Glenn Miller's Blue Champagne. The first plane you'll see is a, B, is a P-51 Mustang. Uh, that plane's uh, prop, considered the greatest prop-driven fighter ever that ever existed. Uh, it's a great history. Maybe someday I'll do a video just on them. You'll see the B B-17 taking off and flying, and you'll see the B-20, one of the B-25s coming in. So, there you go, and I hope you really enjoy this because it's, they're just, it's just really something beautiful to see. So yeah, this is me shooting uh, the Chicago typewriter, AKA the Tommy gun. So the next images you guys are gonna see are gonna be a bit disturbing for some because um, it shows reenactors dressed in full World War II era German uniforms. And you'll see the Soviet camp um, that they have at Reading at the air show every year. Uh, one thing about history that I want you guys to understand is this. Um, history is history. You can't change it. And in order to learn from it, you have to look at things very objectively, with an objective eye. And I want you to look at these images even the Soviet ones, and understand that the United States and the West did have enemies, uh, and there's nothing wrong with pointing it out, pointing the crimes that they committed out, and learning from them. I'm, I fear that the generations coming up, millennials and Zoomers, don't, I mean, don't understand it, don't get it. In fact, I saw one uh, Zoomer complaining that we're, we're learning about World War II was disturbing. I mean, but that's his parents. All right. That's his generation not being able to understand that the world is ultimately a very bad place for a lot of reasons. History shows that. Romans, the Greeks... The Persians, the, the Babylonians, the, uh, the Assyrians, you know, uh, the 20th century was nothing but one giant genocide against one population or another. Started with the Armenians in Turkey. Uh, then we had the genocide of the Ukrainians and others in the Soviet Union. Then we had, of course, the Holocaust. And the Germans didn't just kill, didn't just murder Jews, they murdered gypsies, homosexuals, they murdered Slavs, uh, they killed American POWs in the camps 
French POWs, British, you name it. Um, it was an equal opportunity. If, if you're not like us, we're going to take you out. And it was a, the only time that murder was industrialized. Okay, that, that's the thing that makes that stand out. Um, I, I, I talk more about anti-Semitism in Europe, but that's for another video. But that's what makes it stand out. Uh, a good movie to see, Stanley Tucci, Kenneth Branagh. There's a movie called Conspiracy. It's, uh, it's about the Von Say Conference. And um, it... You learn a lot, and it was done in the house that this thing occurred in 1942. Or 40, yeah, 40, 41, 42. Um, I've actually been there as a tourist. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Chairman Mao's Great Leap Forward, or the cultural uh, ruination of China. Mao wanted to rewrite all of Chinese history. And after the Chinese Civil War was over. He's plotted and was the generator of the murders of maybe 60 million people. Okay. And of course we have Pol Pot and other things. But the 20th century was probably, I mean, they like to say it's the bloodiest century in world history. I would, I don't know, because you don't know what the population was of the of, of different places in Europe when the Romans went through, uh, etc. So that that's kind of an object. You have to be kind of objective about that and go, okay. But you also can see the point, okay. But yeah, you'll see some things that are really disturbing, and I will walk you through them. Okay, so get ready. So here's the Soviet camp. Uh, it was right near where we were shooting the guns. Here's a German camp, and you see two men dressed as Hermann Goering and Erhard Milch. And over here, you see more uh, reenactors dressed as Germans. Um, it, this is just exploring history a little bit. These guys, uh, up a little further, this is actually an SS command post. Gross Deutschland was an SS regiment, and there's a young man dressed in black uh, SS Panzer uh, uniform. And here's some more guys dressed in German uniforms and you know part of it's their their heritage but it bothers me and here's some more soviets um and here finally is our british allies uh and here we have with uh the short fat guy is dressed as Hermann goering with his uh, air marshal's baton and the taller guy is i believe portraying erhard milch they're not wearing army uniforms those are sky blue luftwaffe uniforms so they're there's that. A good show for you guys to watch if you're interested is a show called Nuremberg, Goering's Last Stand. And it's on YouTube. And it's sort of a docudrama. Uh, and it's really well done. And if you want to know more about uh, the final days, the final year of Air Marshal Hermann Goering's life, uh, please do it. He was uh, a tragic figure. I would say because he was a hero of World War One. He was basically the last commanding officer of the Flying Circus. And I actually did a lot of research into Baron von Richthofen, AKA the Red Baron. Uh, and he's part of it. Now, I'm not gonna say Richthofen uh, picked him out to be the commander of the Luftwaffe, but or the commander of, of the Flying Circus. His hand-picked guy was a guy, was a was Cap, Hauptmann Captain, Willy Reinhardt, Willy Reinhardt. And um, he he was killed. Goering took over and uh, got through the war alive, obviously. Um, one of his claims to fame was when the Treaty of Versailles basically prohibited the Germans from having the the top-notch fighter of um, the war, which was the Fokker D7, and it was. Okay, it was. They, they, I mean, the Germans are, in my dad's estimation, because he was a World War II veteran, 
he was a radio, a radio man in B-24 Liberators. Um, he basically said the Germans had the best fighter pilots. All right. You go through their, their aces list from World War I to World War II, and the scores are staggering. I mean, they were, they were sky butchers. They really, really were. I mean, they were true hunters. And Goering, when he was told he had to take these Fokker D7s and destroy them as part of the negotiations with, with the, the Versailles Treaty, which ended, which was ended World War I, they flew the planes to uh, Switzerland and destroyed them. And he became a national hero. He was, he received the Port Le Merit, which was the highest uh, commendation, the highest award a German soldier, military man could receive. Uh, it's the equivalent of the Victoria Cross or the, the Medal of Honor. Just like Rick uh, just like uh, a lot of them. Uh, but Goering fell into the, the trap. Uh, he ran into, he ran into Adolf Hitler, um, and that was it. He was part of the, part of the Beer Hall, Beer Hall Putsch in, was it 1924, uh, and got himself wounded, ended up being an, uh, an addict of, he was a morphine addict, and when he was captured, they weaned him off of it, but the wound that he sustained during the Beer Hall Putsch was the reason why he got addicted to that, and it kind of colored his ju judgment for the rest of his life. Uh, he fell out of favor in about 1940 uh, with Hitler because of his of the failed uh, Battle of Britain. Uh, the The Germans, to be brutally true, truthful, they got their asses handed to them by the Brits. The Brits had absolutely nothing. And they they put up a fight that the Germans couldn't handle. And Spitfires and Hurricanes, you know, shooting down Junkers and Heinkels. It was just, you know, I could go, I could go into why the Germans lost. They didn't have a four-engine bomber. They did have a program once. The general that was leading that program, a man named uh, Walter Weber, was killed in a plane accident in 1938. Goering shot down the program, and the rest is history. But I kind of wanted you guys to have a good time. If you don't watch this whole video, that's fine. But uh, the music is one of my favorite pieces of Glenn Miller. Uh, it's called Blue Champagne. Uh, he was my dad's favorite band leader, my mom's. And uh, Anyway, this is just a good time, so if you live in Pennsylvania and you want to know, learn more about history, uh, please think about attending, okay? Uh, the Reading World War II fly-in, it is really quite something to see. And the airplanes are amazing. It's just amazing. So this is stuff, not Star Wars right now, but I will go live soon. Have a good time. Have a good day.